Hey guys, this video is for all the developers out there who use AWS DynamoDB as a data store in their applications. Many a times while developing and testing an application, we have this need of interacting with our DynamoDB table in order to see how our application behaves. And for that, we need to connect with the DynamoDB service which is running in our AWS account. But this method has several limitations. Firstly, you always need an active internet connection. And secondly, you are being charged by AWS for interacting with the AWS resource, that is, your DynamoDB table. But what if we could set up a local DynamoDB server? Then we won't need an active internet connection and also we won't be charged by AWS anymore. So in this video, we will learn how to set up a local DynamoDB server and how to interact with it using Python. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so DynamoDB local is a software which is provided by AWS only. It is a downloadable version of Amazon DynamoDB using which you can develop and test applications without accessing the DynamoDB web service which is running in your AWS account. Instead, the DynamoDB table is self-contained in your own computer. Basically, the table exists in your local machine. And when you are ready to deploy your application in production, by which I mean you are ready to deploy your application to your AWS account, then you will need to remove the local endpoint of your local DynamoDB server from your code. And then it will automatically point to the DynamoDB web service, which is running in your AWS account. So as I already mentioned, why we would like to use DynamoDB local. So first of all, you don't need an active internet connection all the time. And secondly, you will save on various charges on throughput data storage or data transfer by AWS. And now let us talk about how to install DynamoDB local. So here is the official guide and it mentions that there are three main ways of doing so. So the first one is to um, install an executable directly. And for that, you will need to have the Java runtime environment installed in your local machine. And once you have that, you will get an executable.jar file, which you can download from here in zipped format. And once you do that, you will just need to run this command, this Java command for starting the DynamoDB local server. So you can follow this one for deploying DynamoDB locally on your computer using an executable. And then the second option, if you are a fan of Apache Maven, then you can just try this one. And if you are a fan of Docker like me, then I would recommend you to use this. And this is what actually we'll be using in this video for installing the DynamoDB local in our local machine. So Docker has been there for a while. It's quite an innovative technology there and it makes it much clean and easier to install and maintain various applications. That's why we are going to go with this particular option of installing the DynamoDB local using Docker image. Okay, so before we set up Docker, let me give you a brief introduction about what Docker is. So Docker is a software platform to create, deploy and run applications in isolated environments which are called containers right for example in this video we'll be using the dynamodb local server so that dynamodb local server will be running inside a docker container and that will be totally isolated and that will have all the dependencies or the libraries that it needs because all that has been predefined so that container will know everything about that and it will be running my application in isolation so docker has three major components or let's say two major components inside your machine actually so there is the docker client and there is the docker daemon so the docker daemon is always listening for the docker api requests and it manages several kind of docker objects and then there is something called docker client which is the primary way which docker users use to interact with the docker okay so here is your docker client and here you're trying to interact with the docker daemon which can take several actions and then there is something called docker registry which stores something called docker images now what are docker images a docker image is a read-only template with instructions on how to create a docker container 
so in a way you can say that a docker container is a runnable instance of an image in a docker image uh, so here you can see that this registry is storing all the docker images right so a docker image will contain all the information that you need in order to create a container so using docker daemon we can fetch any image from the registry and then once that image is available in our local machine then we can spin it up we can create a container out of it and then our container can be started to run the required application so this is what is happening inside docker and now let us see how to install it so for that here i have provided this link which you can follow so get docker so here according to your depending upon your operating system you can install docker so for linux you can go into this particular option and then select ubuntu in order to see the instructions for ubuntu and then just follow this and see if it works for you so one thing here is that once you have done everything you have installed docker just try to run this command sudo docker run hello world to see if um, docker is up and running for you right and also you can always check the status of your docker daemon by running sudo system ctl so this is for linux system so sudo system ctl and status is what we want to find for docker so that is what you can follow so as you can see that my docker daemon or my docker service in a way is up and running so that's fine so that is the minimal requirement that we have here that your docker must be up and running okay so once the docker installation is done then the other thing that we need is something called docker compose it is a pretty neat tool which helps you to define and run the containers in uh, run the container doc, uh, docker applications and you just need to specify your um, container inside a yaml file and then it will be uh, running your containers or your applications in a single command so that is what we need so you can simply do pip install docker hyphen compose and yeah that will be it so this is the installation part but now let us come to the main part where we have to do something right so in order to run the dynamodb local server we will be creating a docker compose yaml file which looks like this so you can copy this uh, from here and i already have it on my desktop as you can see so let us try to understand what it means the first thing is the version which is the docker compose file version and then inside the services where i can specify multiple services i have specified only one service which is called dynamodb local so dynamodb local here is the image address of my dynamodb local image so this is the name of my dynamodb local image and as you can see it is amazon slash dynamodb hyphen local colon latest so this is the image which is provided by amazon which contains all the information that you need in order to prepare a container which is able to run the dynamodb local server and we are calling our container as dynamodb hyphen local that's fine and then the ports are 8000 colon 8000 which means that internally um, it will be using 8000 port like inside the container the dynamodb local server will be running on port 8000 and outside if i want to access that from my own machine i'll be using the 8000 port only of my local host and that will be able to make a connection from my machine to the container as you know that container is an isolated environment right so it has a network system of its own okay so that's all that we have here and now once you have done that you need to run docker hyphen compose up inside the same directory so docker hyphen compose up and let's see what happens so it is starting my container dynamodb hyphen local as you can see and it is initializing it with all this configuration right so it means that my dynamodb local server must be up and running so now it's time to check it out so the simplest way of interacting with your dynamodb server is through the aws cli so if you haven't uh, installed already then you can simply do pip install aws cli and then you are good to go so let me just copy this particular aws cli command which is to list the tables inside um, dynamodb so let's let us see what happens if i just remove the endpoint url part okay so in that case it will try to interact with the actual dynamodb service which is running in my aws account whose credentials i have already specified by running aws configure so if that has been done 
then it will just try to fetch the AWS credentials from there and then it will try to find me the list of tables in my AWS account right so that is what requires an active internet connection and that is what is being charged by AWS when I try to take such kind of actions right so now we are gonna do this we are gonna try to interact with our DynamoDB local server so let us see if we get some results or not so yeah we are getting the results which means that now aws cli is treating this particular server as my dynamodb server and from there it got the result that there are currently no tables inside my dynamodb table inside my dynamodb um, service which is running there basically so now um, let us try to see how to interact with it programmatically using boto3 so boto3 is the package which we can use in order to interact with aws services using python so all you need to do is pip install boto3 and once you have done that you are good to go so import boto3 is the first thing that we need and now let us see so i will be creating a dynamodb resource object by doing boto3 dot resource so everything which i'll be now mentioning from here that has already been covered that has already been covered in two earlier videos which have been um, put up on my channel so i'll be putting the links in the description of this video below but for now let us see how to do it for dynamodb local servers basically so boto 3 dot resource dynamodb and then endpoint url is what i'm gonna specify extra so this is going to be http localhost colon 8000 so this is my ddb resource object and now i can check out again the list of tables to see if everything is working fine or not so ddb.tables.all which actually returns a generator so let me just convert it to a list to see so look at that i'm getting an empty list which means that there is no table existing in my dynamodb um, and now what I'm going to do here is create a new table, right? So how to create a table inside your DynamoDB local server. So here is the catch. You do not have access to the UI of your DynamoDB local server. So everything that you have to do now is through, is through some programmatic uh, means, right? You can either use the AWS CLI or you can use Python or any other programming language in order to make that connection and take any kind of action. So now let me just create the table so ddb.create table so now um, let us try to take some help from the docs so you have to specify the table name first of all then you have to specify the attribute definitions and key schema and yeah so in this way you have to specify that so let me just do that here so the table name let me call it students so i'm making a students table and then attribute um, definitions is equal to a list in which i have to specify the um, all the attribute definitions which are being used as keys in my dynamic table, uh, table so attribute name let it be id so i am going to have a hash key which is id the primary key of my table and attribute type this is gonna be let us keep it string so i'm putting it as s as it is being mentioned here okay and then the key schema is what i have to specify so key schema is what i'm gonna put here so key schema is also a list in which first of all i have to provide the attribute name so it's this attribute name should be available in the attribute definitions so that is id and then the key type which can be either hash key or a range key so we are going to put it as hash and that's it so these are the three things that I need to define or provide in order to create a table. So let me run it. Okay, so we are getting some error, which is what? Okay, so it means that I've just messed up with the name of this parameter here. Okay, and now we have to provide provision throughput. Okay, so this is one more required argument, which is provision throughput so it has to be provided like this so let me just copy it and i think this will be the last thing so let's go with this and i think we are fine so the default value of provision throughput is usually five so i'm just going to put it as five and 
run okay so i think the table got created so if i try to see it here yes the table got created so this looks fine so now i can do anything in my table so all i need to do is just create a table object which is ddb dot table and then the name of your table students and then table dot i can do anything here so i can do table dot scan to see what all items i have i have no item so let me just add an item just for example so table dot put item item is equal to let me just put id as one and let me just put one more field name so you have to just uh, specify a json which will just get saved in dynamodb for you so the tape the item got put right and now table.scan should give me the results so as you can see that everything that i'm doing here is happening on a dynamodb table but that dynamic table has nothing to do with your aws account or aws in general and everything is happening locally in your machine so yeah so this is how you can interact with um, dynamodb local server by specifying the endpoint url and i hope that this is clear and if you still have any doubts you can put them in the comment section below that's it from this video thanks for watching